to seal it. Roger we Federer races six, four, six, four, six, into a 13th US Open quarter final. He has crushed David Goffin today. 6 2, 6 2, 6 low. Well, that match point was pretty good actually from Goffin. I wish he would have played a lot more tennis like that, really testing out the Federer backhand, but in true Roger style. Ending it with a bit of flair, backhand winning passing shot up the line. Excellent performance again back to back for Roger Federer. What a performance. Certainly from Roger, I'm sure David Goffin won't be feeling that, but uh, looking good for Federer. Of course, uh, the knock on effect, isn't it? He's, he's, he's taking care of the body. He's into the, the latter stages now of this tournament. Goodbye. As we mentioned, an hour and 20 against Dan Evans, an hour and 19 today. And we're about to hear from the five time champion. Roger. One hour and 19 minutes of quick work. We only watch on the outside. How would you assess your performance today? Yeah, I mean, it was great. Uh, I thought I had a good feeling out here again today, like in the previous match. Uh, Got to say that David didn't have his best day either. You know, he was struggling, so I uh, was able to, to do well there. You know, I was down in the score early, so obviously you got to come back. Uh, Mentally and also in terms of the game because I thought the game I got broken. He picked some good sides He did a good job there So I was getting too down on myself and then when I was up uh, all of a sudden the break I started to feel like uh, You know he was really starting to not play the same way anymore or like I know him from previous times But uh, I'm very happy the, the level of play the atmosphere was great and uh, it's a great day and I'm very happy of course At some stage, Roger, the numbers become difficult to comprehend. 56th major quarterfinal, 13th quarterfinal at the U.S. Open alone. You get asked about it all the time and you share it but with us sometimes, but I, I do think it's terrific to share with the folks who are here. The important role that joy plays for the sport in your longevity. How important is it even after all these years? Well, I mean, I guess at this stage is crucial and at the very beginning, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't pick up the racket. But uh, in between, you know, I'm sure you go through some stages where, you know, maybe being on the road all the time is maybe not uh, what you always wanted to do. You also feel like maybe you missed out on a few things, but I always try to see the glass sort of half full. And uh, um, look, I got to see so many incredible people around the world and uh, see these cities and countries that I never thought I would visit maybe when I was a little boy. So that goes hand in hand with playing on a court like this. So I don't know. Now it's easy to, to see the joy and all that stuff, but you also need the success. Just saying like I love playing tennis and getting my ass kicked every day is not, uh, <laughs> it's not, it's not a great thing. So you need some success, you know, and uh, I did have that along the way, which helped. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not just in the tennis world, so many people, Roger, reacted to the scene we saw last night here with Naomi and Coco. You wouldn't think that 6-3-6 love makes for a memorable match, yet it seemed indelible given what happened afterward. What was your impression of what you saw? Well, I was watching, um, as I was having dinner, we were watching and uh, the sound wasn't on. And then as all this thing was happening, I'm like, oh, what's going on? tried to put the TV, you know, on loud again, and it didn't have any batteries as we had it lying around too long. <laughs> so I couldn't get the, the sound to go. But then anyway, eventually we figured it out and I caught the back end. But uh, no, I thought it was, uh, I don't thought it was very nice, you know, to see camaraderie um, at the highest level in sports. Uh, they're both still so young and they're gonna have such a bright future ahead. And I'm sure that rivalry is gonna be very uh, nice and, and special, I think, for, for years to come. But also others are so fair play on the tour, women's side, men's side. 
And it's nice that tennis is that way still, and I hopefully will always stay that way, very respectful to one another. It's really... Yeah, and it's, uh, it was emotional. They showed it. Uh, I like to see it. I'm an emotional guy too. Um, you know, in a, in a way, I also feel bad beating up on a good friend like David, who I've also shared some great moments on the court with. And, and I hope he recovers and comes back and plays a strong year end. And I hope that will always stay like that. And of course, while we're playing, it's tough, but it always has to remain fair. And they showed that beautifully last night, Naomi and Coco. As much as any athlete we've ever seen, your ability to turn the page from a defeat is remarkable. What advice would you give Coco here? Obviously a difficult loss at 15 years old. When you talk to her and tell her, you laugh at the, at the 15 year, we all marvel at that. What advice would you give her about moving past defeats, which are inevitable? Yeah, my girls are 10, so they're almost there. But, the, the, <laughs> um, so it's like, sounding like a father figure, right? Uh, and I should know what to say. I just remember myself at 15, I was a wreck after I lost. So I thought she did actually very well last night. Um, and these are the defeats she needs. Um, this is what you, you learn from. Um, maybe what did she ro do wrong in the second set? Or was it just all Naomi? It doesn't matter. Um, the kind of result like this maybe is exactly the thing she needed to move forward from it. Uh, you stay positive. She had a great run. I think if she would have known that she was going to play this well at Wimbledon and then back it up here in New York and get this kind of crowd support, I think it's all good. So if you look at the big scheme of things, things are great and she shouldn't get down on herself right now. So she's going to enjoy the rest of her career and work hard. Finally, Roger, we see you do so many magical things with a racket and a tennis ball. I actually asked you to do this, and you were gracious enough to indulge a couple of years ago at a night session. Do you think we see you hit the balls into the crowd that you've signed? It's an exciting moment for the people that come out in these great crowds. But do you think you could pick a ball and pick one person beyond the lower bowl and hit the ball directly to that person. I mean, what do you think? No. So, no, um, the tricky bit is, you know, we don't hit balls into the stands all the time. Uh, we're used to these dimensions, but as it goes up and deep, you're not quite sure, but I'm pretty confident I can get it close. I don't know, I, I think we should go for the ESPN booth. Those guys can't catch, but uh, let, let's go there and put them under pressure. Well, how about this? One to the ESPN booth, and then one to a fan that you pick out. Okay, let's do it. So a lengthy post-match interview comes to a conclusion. Always a good listen, of course. Tapping into Roger's thoughts initially uh, about the match, and then, of course, asked about uh, a really special moment last night between Coco Golf and Naomi Osaka after the Japanese player won their meeting here on Arthur Ashe Stadium. Going back to the match, Taylor. Now, now hold on, hold on there just a second. <laughs> we got to let everybody know who's up there. Okay, that's yeah. that's Cliff, and oh, hold on. Let's let everybody know who's in the booth. Cliff Drysdale, the legend, the lordship, and Mary Jo, who just happens to be a very close friend of yours. Yeah, so the issue here is like you can't lob it in, so I gotta rocket it into the thing. So they better be ready. So it's taking some challenge here. Go with the purple flag. All right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say again, Roger. So the lady with the purple flag. All right, we go there. Oh my gosh, it's right to her. Oh! oh say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Federer. So Roger having some fun and games post-match with the interview and a little challenge to try and get one of those balls into 
one of the American broadcasting booths. He's in, he's in the right kind of mood to take on that sort of very unusual challenge. That's one of the longer post-match interviews I've ever seen. Good composure. Yes. Better. Yeah. On court and after the match. 